Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Cold Hard Truth NFL podcast. I'm your host, Anish Gupta. And I'm your host, Sri Kara Jendran. Well, as you know, you guys kind of already expect it. Uh, we're already in the week, what, 11 now of the year? I've lost track. What the hell? <laughs> it's going too fast. Um, Shrikar is currently probably freezing his ass off in uh, Syracuse, New York, because, you know, for those who are watching are probably, you know, true uh, NFL fans, and they know what's about to come in Western New York for this weekend. So and how's it hanging in there, bro? Uh, it's It's all good. I mean... I can't say that I'm not used to it. I mean, I think the second year around that you're in Syracuse, it gets a little better. But, uh, yeah, expect some very, very intense snowfall in the Buffalo area, central New York area. So we're just getting it. Winter's coming, right? Winter's coming. Yeah, and Shrikar's going to miss most of that because he's headed home the day we (laughs) Ah. play Stanford. So whoever's watching this and wants to tune in, tune into our game versus Stanford. All right, Battle of the Axe. Um... Yeah, I'm kind of dying here with my 49 degree weather. No, brother. Uh, It's so cold. (laughs) All right. Well, before we get into it, this episode, like all our episodes, is brought to you by Manscaped. Uh, You know, while we're suffering from cold weather, uh, as we are the Cold Hard Truth podcast, talked about the first word cold. Now we got to talk about this hard part. It's very hard uh, to trim down there. Uh, And uh, one thing that can help with that is Manscaped. (laughs) (laughs) I have to make a new like intro to it every week. So this was my uh, acapella version of it. Uh, Cold Art Truth is now brought to you by Manscaped, the best in uh, best in men's below the waist grooming. Uh, they launched their fourth generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. Uh, we've tried it, blown away by the experience. Craftsmanship is next level. Uh, it's the ultimate groin and body uh, body hair trimmer. Focuses on intelligent functionality and incredibly comfortable grooming experience. Uh, it features a cutting edge ceramic blade. It's got some wireless charging, advanced skin safe technology. Um, battery is really long on it. Just an amazing product. Obviously, Manscaped has other amazing stuff. Super comfy uh, t-shirt, boxers, nose, ear, hair, trimmer, um, and the crop preserver ball deodorant. Uh, Manscaped's brought to you by the 49ers, by us, uh, and 2 million men worldwide use it. So uh, what's the exclusive offer, Shriek? What, what can they do with this offer from us? Well, you can, you can use a nice little promo code, uh, and we call that uh, CHT20. So you can go ahead and use that. <laughs> Get some good deals. Yeah, with that promo code, uh, promo you get twenty percent off and free shipping at mans- uh, manscaped.com. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tool for the job with Manscaped. Go grab yourself that lawnmower four point now. Let us get right into the video. Um, let's first talk about a game that really stole pretty much everyone in the NFL world's attention uh, from about 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Pacific, so 3 to 4 Eastern. Uh, um, yeah, the Browns were kind of done, and so, you know, I missed out on what was the most garbage time of garbage times. Uh, and I tuned into the Bills playing the Vikings at uh, Buffalo in Orchard Park, and we came across a really fun ending to quite possibly the game of the year and one of the best games I've seen in a really long time. Um Obviously, Justin Jefferson made one of the greatest uh, fourth quarter catches I think I've ever seen in my life. And uh, the game just did not end there. I mean, we're talking goal line stop by literally, I'm not even kidding, literally this much. Uh, and then obviously, Josh fumbles it at his own end zone. It's recovered by the Vikings for a touchdown. Gabe Javis, a little bobble uh, on the sideline. Uh, got away with one there, tied the game up. Uh, Minnesota goes down the field. Jefferson with another beautiful catch on a seven route that Kirk threw a dime on. Uh, They get a field goal, and then Josh marches down the field literally with his legs uh, and then throws a really bad interception, double clutch the ball, threw it in the middle. Patrick Peterson, former All-Pro with the Arizona Cardinals, gets the pick, and the Vikings improve to 8-1 and while the Bills are now, I believe, third in their division. So I just gave you the recap of the game. Shrikar, why don't you dive into it? Uh, I think we're probably going to take two different approaches to this game. Uh, I'll let you start off. So a big question I've been seeing, you know, not even on Twitter, just people have been asking me, uh, asking me this question. That's, are you concerned about the Bills? And my answer to that is I'm concerned enough with the Bills where I think they need to make some changes. They cannot continue to play this way. Relying on Allen to the extent that they are. Talked about it before. 
the guy is responsible for nearly 85% of the Bills' total offense. You will not win the Super Bowl relying that much on him. They ask him to throw a lot. He is the Bills' leading rusher. They're just asking way too much of him, and it's leading to mistakes now, as you see. I mean, he's thrown six interceptions in the past 10 quarters. Like, it's definitely is definitely a factor in there. Um, and if we go on the flip side, the defense is just, it's getting gashed on the ground. They're really beat up. Now, I will say being beat up in the secondary isn't really an excuse for the run defense. I mean, they still have Matt Milano. I still like the Bills. I think they're still viable Super Bowl contenders, but if you had to ask me this question now, uh, I had a different perspective on it before, but Kansas City or Buffalo, if you had to ask me that question now on either field, I would take Kansas City, even in Buffalo. If it's Miami or Buffalo, I'd take the Bills. And, you know, we'll see. Buffalo has a pretty brutal uh, stretch coming up after these next couple weeks where you got to face the other three teams in the AFC East. you got the Bengals and Cincy on primetime. I'm pretty interested to see how they do down the stretch, but I do think they have to make some changes and stop putting everything on 17. We, okay. I got so much hate and so much scrutiny for, including a little bit from Shrew, but not as much, but like for putting the, not putting the bills at one. We went, we went back and forth on this power rankings coming into the year. I, obviously my stupid, my stupid butt put the Rams above the bills as well as the chiefs. So fine. You can laugh at me all you want with that one. But, um, Again, why are we, okay, look, I'm the biggest Josh Allen guy out there. I obviously don't talk about him much anymore just because he's kind of, you know, now anointed himself in that, you know, top five conversation, top three, top two, whatever. Why are we anointing the Bills number one when they have not won anything? What do they have to show for all this talent? They have not won a Super Bowl. Why are we just putting them as this like consensus great team? This is my problem. Like we're just, this is the same thing that happened with Baltimore in in 2019 that Jack and I went literally back and forth on really heated debates on this. Like, why are we anointing teams like the Ravens and the Bills for stuff that they just have not shown? So that was like my whole thing. And sure, you know, we, everyone predicts Buffalo to go 15 and two, 14 and three. They, they constantly disappoint in that regard. They've disappointed in that regard for the last two years. So like, that's my point. I think Buffalo is getting too high expectations. I think they fall into it. They're they're a bit arrogant on the field. You can see that. Um, I mean, like, you know, teams are like going crazy. Like they just won the Super Bowl when they beat the Bills. Like, are we, why? Like the Chiefs are still, they've always been. And in my heart, they always will be the number one consensus team in the AFC. I have like the Bills, sure. You're going to tell me, oh, Anish, but the Bills beat them. Chiefs didn't have their two starting corners. So like, I mean, what, like, what are you going to throw at me? And now it's probably going to be that the Chiefs finished with a better record than Buffalo. And if they were going to play in the playoffs again, it's going to be at Kansas City. And Buffalo is never going to get Kansas City at home. They're going to have to deal with it. Bills fans are going to have to deal with it. And you're probably going to have to deal with another loss to Patrick Mahomes. That's just how the cookie's been crumbling so far. Like, that's what I got to say about Buffalo. And you're right. They are true Josh Allen reliant, but also... This is probably the first time I've actually been critical of Josh on this pod, quite frankly, because we just don't talk about him. Like the the interceptions a lot are on him. Like the one to Pat Pete, what are you doing? I mean, like it was a double clutch. You do not double clutch and throw over the middle of the field. That is scouting one on one. You never do that. Well, at, at minimum, um, you tie the game. So huh? At minimum, you tie the game too. They were in. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, he took a risk. Right. And like, yeah, you just can't, that's a late ball. You're double clutching it. That's DB galore. I mean, you're throwing it in the end zone, right? So there's already about five or six DBs that are there. You just don't want to take that chance, including linebackers that play off it. Like just not a good read. Um, a lot of his interceptions have been on him. Uh, I used to always defend him and say he's had, you know, a lot of drops. Not really like since 2020, not really. So I can't put it on that. Um, I'm not going to go on a limb and say, you know, he's not good or there are quarterbacks that surpassed him. I'm not into all that stuff. I do rankings at the end of the year. Um, but yeah, the bills, they've got some work to do. Uh, I don't want to put any blame on Ken Dorsey. I do agree. Fine. It's a little Josh Allen reliant. You can afford to do that though, because I mean, for long-term, no, but I think as of right now, if it's working, which at least it kind of has, yes. Um, but I just don't think it'll work in January, I would say. I think that's like... Well, even now it's not working, though. Yeah, I, I, like, they're scoring points. It's like, it's not like they can't score. I mean, you know, these are like 30 to 33 games. I'm not really... I'm more concerned a little bit on the defense. Like, I mean, 
just because their secondary has been a bit banged up. I, I, I just think they're lacking consistency in situational football. That's where it comes down to it. Uh, and yeah, a lot of the situational football has been on Josh. So uh, that's probably, by the way, by the way, Sean McDermott, if I'm Sean McDermott, take the points at the goal line. Like, you're up. What were they up by? Like, I, I think they were up like, I want to say, 17? I want to say, no, I want to say 10. No, no, 10, 10. When they're 10, at 10. the goal line, why don't you take the points? They're at the seven yard line. It's, that just yeah. makes no sense to okay. me. So you talk about situational football. I mean, no, no, no but you're you. playing like it's snow game. I don't, I don't know. I mean, there, you can call, you can call it what you want. I, I think the bills as a whole though, um, they're they're being anointed as the, as the ones that everyone's hunting. Why? The Bengals won the AFC. The Chiefs won the Super Bowl. Like, if you're an AFC team, those are the two that you should be really focusing on, not a team that's been constant playoff, you know, three straight playoff losses. So, I don't know. That's just me. Um, moving on. This is the team I wanted to talk about. This is the team that I've been begging to talk about for the last few weeks. Minnesota. I, I mean, again, I was, ext- like, all in on Kevin O'Connell, O'Connell, and let me just say this: the Vikings were zero and six in one possession games last year. And if te- if it didn't go down to um, the, I believe the fourth quarter, the Vikings would be fourteen and three last year. You want to know what they are with uh, O'Connell? Six and zero. Seven. Seven and zero. Oh, in one possession games, uh, Kevin O'Connell is a hell of a coach. Uh, might maybe one day and sit up here and say he's better than Kyle Shanahan. I won't make that yet, but maybe one day. Okay. Um, Kirk Cousins has been phenomenal. Like I, I, I've been a really big Kirk defender. Uh, I said with or without Allen, I thought Kirk was going to show that you know this was his game to take. And sure, he had two bad interceptions. I can't defend that. But in the fourth quarter and overtime, my God, was he impressive? I mean the the throw to Jefferson that set it up in the goal line. If those of you who are, do not know what I'm talking about. 26 yard line third and seven I believe like one of the most I think it was one of the most accurate throws I've seen all year that was insane um he has time and time again at least come through when it matters and that is why they're winning these one possession games sure it could be against Washington Arizona blah blah the fact of the matter is they're winning the games so I can't fault him for not winning (laughs) like um Big, big time on Kirk. Obviously, Justin Jefferson. I think he's even exceeded my expectations. I probably have to... I think he's probably up there now. I think he's Cooper Cup. I, it really hurts to say that. But yeah, I think it's him and him and Tyreek who are the two best right now. Um, yeah, and the Vikings, I, I think their ceiling is limitless. Like, they could really be the best... I mean, they were my Super Bowl pick for a reason. Uh, so it's... You know, I got, again, a lot of slander for it, uh, but they're they're looking pretty good. Uh, I think I had Vikings, Eagles, and the NFC chip. I don't, I still, like, you know, obviously throughout the season, I thought, I think Philly would probably win it. Now, I'm, like, even with the Philly loss, it didn't really matter. I'm, I'm teetering a little bit. I, I think many could, could surprise some people. Um, yeah, I'll leave it to you. Uh, I, I think the Vikings are a good team. In my opinion, didn't really change after this game because – you can think about it positively, or you can think about it in the sense that the Vikings needed a huge, huge collapse from the Bills to win that game. And they did make the plays. You know, I'll give you that. But the Bills literally had that. I think the Bills lost it more than the Vikings won, in my opinion. As far as Kirk Cousins goes, now that Carson Wentz is out of the way, I think Cousins is the hardest quarterback that I can evaluate on a play-by-play basis. He will make a, <laughs> an amazing throw, and he'll follow it up and throw right at a defender. It's just it's Kirk Cousins, right? But he's doing good. I'd say for this season, I think he's you know bordering on that top ten. Uh, I think he I think he's been good. For bordering? What? what? No, I think he's bordering on that top five. I'm not uh, even kidding. Uh, I can I can't get there with Kirk. Five quarterbacks that have, name me five that have played better than Kirk Cousins this year. Mahomes, Tua, Jalen. Uh, I'll still go Allen over, um, still go Allen over Kirk, and I'll go Lamar over Kirk. Okay, okay. that's fair. I'll go Burrow I, over I Kirk think, too. I think I'll go Geno over Kirk as well. I'll go. Yeah, I had him at seven. I had him at seven. I had Kirk at seven. So I could argue Brady, yeah. but I, I, I don't know. I could argue Brady. Okay. Okay. I could argue. Okay, I'll, we'll, we'll leave it. We'll leave it. But <laughs> good. He's not. He's he not top he five could. for me. Uh. Tyreek versus Justin Jefferson. I know you touched on that. I think, I think Jefferson is the Tyreek's having the better season, right? But I think Jefferson is the better receiver. 
uh, if that makes sense. So I, I disagree. Think, I, I'd play, uh, I'd play Hill one. I don't know. I think it's fair to have either one of them at one. It's it's pretty. Tame Jeff's had some do, uh, duds. Jeff's had some duds. Reek yes. is never gonna have a dud with his. his well, he he so. just had one. Forty four yards. And a touchdown. Yeah. Watch yeah. watch the game. He 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 was a decoy, and also he had Denzel Ward on. He got double the entire game. I think I think he did. I think I think it's in my book. I think it's super close between the two of them either way. But I don't know with the Vikings. Is this still sustainable? If you had to, we, me and Anish were just talking about this before the podcast. If the Vikings and Niners faced off in a playoff match, <laughs> you already yeah. know who I'm taking on either field. I would take the Niners because I know that the uh, Niners are built for that stage. They are built to beat teams like Minnesota in the playoffs. I think they can do it. Minnesota, I just don't know. I think they're a good team. You know, I'll give them their props where props are due. I think it was a good win. However, how sustainable is it all, right? I, I think that's one thing that I still lingers in the back of my mind. Really? Yeah. Not sold. Not sold I yet. Mean, well, yeah. I, I, obviously, you know, when, when I can even understand the slander I got for it, right? Like I'm talking about a team who's, who's got a quarterback who's been known to choke in prime time. I've got a guy who's only had one playoff win in his career, and I'm expecting him to go all the way to the Super Let's Bowl. make it clear. To, I'm, NFL, not sold, I'm not sold. I'm not sold. I'm not sold on a Super Bowl team, but I'm sold on a. I think the Vikings now good. genuinely have a shot at the. I think the Vikings have a shot at the one seed. I think they. Oh do. yeah, they do. Philly's, That's, yeah, Philly's sure. schedule is easy, but I I can see them dropping two more games. And if they do, if they do. The Vi- obviously then the Vikings would need to go like fifteen and two. Okay, so maybe not, but I think I think Vikings at home versus SF. I think they would. I think they would win. I have not seen the Vikings play SF at home since 2018 week one. Uh, and that was Jimmy G's, I believe, uh, first start, you know, as the starting quarterback uh, of the Niners. And they won it like 17. He obviously came in late, but I'm talking like to 16. Wide. So, yeah. So, like, I haven't seen them play at mini for a long time. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm very high on the Vikings. I, I think this just made me more confident, I think, for maybe Shrikar didn't really change. But, yeah, I think this is a team that you need to start putting in that Super Bowl bubble. Um, they are really good. Not Again, yet, man. I've said Not this. I, maybe, the Niners, maybe the Niners have surpassed them with McCaffrey, but I came into the, uh, the year thinking player for player this was the best offense in football. Uh, Christian Derrissaw has been a better ta- a left tackle than Trent Williams this year. So, yeah. I mean. There's been five yeah, tackles better than Trent Williams. Like and then Brian O'Neill's been great. Ezra Cle- like these guys. Have, I've been talking with Vikings fans for the last few years. Just like if they can hit, man. If they can just be consistent, this is a really good team, and that's finally working out. So it's kind of our recap on the game. Uh, anything else? Do you think uh, Buffalo's in trouble? Like, do you th- do you think they don't win the division? Uh, I'll again. I'll reiterate what I said. I'm not concerned enough about the Bills. I I think as of right now, I still say they win the division, but. Okay. You look at that, I mean, because the Jets, the Pats, and the Dolphins. I could see Miami winning it. I could see Miami. All right, I'm going to throw this at you. I'm going to throw this at you. They have four, I believe they have four division games left. They're 0-2 right now. If they lose two out of the four, they're not winning the division. I'm going to, like, I'm going to stamp that right now. If they lose, so they play the Pats twice, they play the Jets and the Dolphins once. Mm -hmm. I believe the Jets is uh, at home. I believe the Dolphins is at home, and then obviously they split with uh, the Pats, but... If they lose two of those four games, they are not winning the division. What I think, think they beat New England on the road, and I think they beat the Jets in their in their building. So, okay, so Miami in their building is a little tougher because they can run the ball, and it's going to be snowing like crazy. So that's a little bit tougher. But I think they get. I, I'm going to say they get three of the four. I think the Pats twice okay. and the Jets once. Because okay. Pats is in January. Okay. It's like January 8th. You're still not sold on I think the Pats get them once, man. I think they do. Uh, if they were to get them once, I think it would be in Buffalo and not. Because, you know, in week 18, you know, some other okay. stuff may happen. So. Yeah, I, I think I think the Pats get them once. All right. Well, it's kind of – and then Minnesota. Um, you think they run away with the division, right? Oh, sure. oh, they have it locked up. They have it locked up. They All should right. be keeping their eyes on the one seed in the conference, as you said. Yep. All right, let's move on. Uh, Mahomes, you know, 10 o'clock Mahomes, we don't talk about. This is, again, this, I, I said this last time too. This just reminds me of 
the Patriots when they would play at 10 o'clock. Like, everyone just assumes they're going to win. There's not much to talk about. We only talk about if the Patriots are in jeopardy of losing. Same thing with the Chiefs. Like, feels like it's just clockwork for Patrick Mahomes. Like, you know, he's never lost to an under uh, 500 team past November in his career. Like, this is just clockwork for him. Um, the topic is, is Patrick Mahomes the MVP frontrunner? I feel like everyone's talking about that. Um, I'm going to start. Uh, I think he should be. And obviously everyone's number two has been kind of Jalen Hurts, Allen being kind of a third. I, like, you're going to think I'm crazy. And like, I feel like people are doing this narrative too, but people say it's just trying to be different. I genuinely think Tua should be in this conversation and I'm not even kidding. Um, like when I watched the Dolphins play the Browns, they, he picked them apart. Like it wasn't even fair. They had two negative plays the entire game. And Tua on every third down, it seemed he could control the middle of the field. I have never seen a quarterback consistently control the middle of the field the way I have seen Tua do it this year. Just because of how the rules have changed throughout the last couple years and what the Dolphins have been able to do. Seriously, it's insanely impressive. And like something that I've always stuck with Tua on this, he's always been really accurate. Okay, fine. He underthrows the ball, whatever. Like he cannot control that. What he can control is getting the ball to his target and at least or in a good, uh, accurate way. And he does that. Uh, I think his stats have been really impressive considering he's missed two games. Um, he's undefeated as a starter when he plays for more than two quarters. I, I think Tua should be up there. I, I think it's, I think Mahomes is one right now, but I think two is a one B. You might you might be surprised, but I actually agree with you. That's exactly what I was really? gonna say. I really? Tua, I think Allen should be out of the conversation and it should go Mahomes mm-hmm. to a Jalen. Like literally. Fine. Yeah. Now Tua's case is a little bit hurt because obviously the concussion, but if you look at the numbers, it literally rivals anybody. And in many cases it surpasses them. And that's with missing a few games. Eighteen touchdowns against three picks, seventy one percent completion percentage. He's throwing for nine yards per attempt. I mean those are MVP type numbers, right? So I actually agree with you. I think, yes, Jalen Hurts has an argument. Yes, Tunga Bailoa has been phenomenal, but Mahomes is on pace to shatter the single season passing yards record, and he might not need all 17 games. That's, I think, we look at, we look at Sunday. Mahomes threw for 331 yards, four touchdowns a pick. Uh, and on the year, he's already almost near uh, 3,000. He already has 25 touchdowns, seven picks. So if you look at the 17 game pace, that's literally like what we're looking at, like 5,500 yards almost. And that's well above, I think that's well above 40 touchdowns. That's probably above 45. Um, And for those wondering, Peyton Manning has the current record right now. uh, Five, four, seven, seven. Yep. With the 2013 Broncos and also Mahomes and his team, I guess they're seven and two. They're number one seed in the AFC right now. They also have two more primetime games, so that gives Mahomes a little bit you know, more of a chance to showcase in front of the nation, so that'll help him. But still eight games left, but I think Mahomes is undeniably in the lead for MVP for me right now. But I will, Yeah, I, I'm with you there. Uh, I will give props to Tua where it's due. I mean, that guy's having a phenomenal year. So, yeah, I, I know a lot. I remember Jack especially was out on him. Um this this is kind of what I've been saying. Same thing with you know two and uh, Daniel Jones. Like, obviously, I'm not putting Daniel in no MVP discussion, but I'm just saying you know with the right coaching and maybe you know with the right personnel around them, look what they've been able to do. I mean, like and Daniel doesn't even have a wide receiver. Like he literally does not have a wide receiver that's had a hundred yard game. <laughs> like what? I mean, like Daniel Jones for what he's had to deal with, right? I'm just throwing these guys out there, like. First of all, he has only two interceptions on the year, despite not having a single outside threat that you would would start on any other team. Okay, like, I mean, it's it's incredible what these two have done, and I'm not saying that because they're goop merchants, but I'll take a little boast here. Like, it's I feel like it's just you know some of these quarterbacks, like you know, especially these two guys in year three and year four respectively, give them the right person. Give them the right coaching. Give them time. I feel like in the NFL, we're seeing too much of the cyclic uh, cyclic um, mindset where you just want to get off them really quick. No, that is not how it worked for the four, first like 80 years of the league. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of what I had to say. Um, do you think there's any way to uh, breaks free from Mahomes and wins it? Breaks free, absolutely not. But I think there is a way that he can win it. Um, okay. But it'll be a tight race the whole way if he does. And on Daniel Jones... 
he has done an incredible job this year of protecting the ball. That was the main issue, and he has, what, two mm-hmm. picks on the year? We don't see him yep. fumble as much. And he's basically allowed Saquon Barkley to be this kind of offensive engine for New York. So I think he's done a splendid job at, at managing the game. I, I know people hate to hear game manager a lot, but it can be, it can be a good phrase to describe a, a quarterback thing. when you do it well. Yeah, it's not, it's not a bad phrase by any means, but at least he's protecting the ball. He's doing his job. That's, that's where I'll leave it with Daniel. Which Jones. is, you got to admit, it's hard to do with the personnel around him. I, I think it's 100%, pretty hard. 100%. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I don't think Tua will break free, but I do think you're right. He has a shot to win it. Uh, I think Jalen, if he wins out, uh, definitely does. Just because, again, if you look at this Washington loss, I mean, it was stupid, right? Like, the, first of all, the face mask, uh, the Quez Watkins fumble. I mean, that, that really pissed me off. I was, I was really angry. Like, like, I would be so mad if that's, that's how, I, you know, a drive got killed. I mean, that's just something Philly does not do. You're not going to do that again. That's a very fluky loss. Um, Washington really had to have everything go their way. They had two 55 plus yard kicks made by a dude who is so damn inconsistent. Carolina fans know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I have to say about the MVP race. I think Mahomes is one. Surprisingly, I didn't expect you to agree with me here. Two is two, or actually I got him one B kind of, and then Jalen is a three. Uh, and I'd probably have Allen outside looking in. Mm-hmm. And Hertz was Hertz uh, on your point there. He was decent. Uh, obviously, he had that interception that hit AJ in the hands. It's not his fault necessarily. Not his fault. Yeah, it's it's not it's not a bad effort. And again, it seems very fluky. Like that's why I'm still safe with Philadelphia. That I still think they're the best team in the NFC. Like I still think they're fine. Yeah. It was just one of Fair those enough. games. It happens. Yeah. All right, moving on. <laughs> We're finally talking about this team in a good light. Uh, I knew it was coming, and I'm so mad I didn't do this. I like I was to- tossing and turning about this game, uh, and of course, you know, I don't pick it. Um, Packers made a stand. Uh, they won, or they scored 14 unanswered in the fourth quarter to tie the game. Won it in overtime. You can talk about the questionable going forward on fourth down uh, with Mike McCarthy there in overtime. You can talk about uh, the offsides on offense uh, by Jalen Tolbert <laughs> by the Cowboys. Uh, but let's focus on the Packers here. Um, Rodgers finally is able to connect down the field on the sidelines. Uh, and the Packers offense looks way more compatible than uh, what we've seen over the last five weeks. Finally, something that we at least expected uh, somewhat of what this offense could look like with a downfield receiver. Uh, and yeah, yeah, they won the game uh, and really put some life into this team. Like I, I this definitely saved their season. Uh, Shriek, I know you put it in the topic. Will the Packers make the playoffs? What do you think? I remember we had this talk co- or, or this topic, and I remember you had them at seven and ten or six and eleven. So does this now change? I don't know if they'll be that bad, but I'm going to remain firm in my stance. I don't think they're going to make the playoffs, and here's why. First of all, I want to talk about the good first before I get to the, the bad. But Rogers showed to me that he's not emotionally done yet. And that's always a great thing to see. Um, and the biggest plays of the game for me to show that were in overtime. Um, when he had that bullet to Alan Lazard on third down, uh, they were near midfield. It was a huge gain. I think it was around 40 yards. Rodgers was literally celebrating on his way down the field. And then the next play, you have that handoff to Aaron Jones, where Rodgers is literally He elite. loves to eat that one. <laughs> where, no, and Aaron, on that Aaron Jones run, I mean, found Rodgers as a lead blocker, right? So he's, he's flexed on him after. Watch Mason Crosby hit a game winner, right? Those two plays, maybe it can turn them around. Maybe. Or maybe it's just, you know, just two memorable plays from a forgettable season. We'll see how that ends up. But another big thing is the Packers, we talked about it the last time we talked about it, but they finally dedicated themselves to their true identity. Matt LaFleur called, I think, double the amount of runs as he did passes. So it worked yep. well. Rodgers threw for 11 yards per attempt. The rushing attack, 207 yards, five yards a carry. Look, Green Bay has a long road back, but Rodgers seems invested. They seem to have found the formula. But However, I don't think they're going to make the playoffs because I'm looking around in the conference. Let's go ahead and name the teams that I think are better than Green Bay. So starting with the East, okay. Eagles, Giants, Cowboys, I'd all take I'd take all of them over Green Bay. Dallas maybe not, but Eagles and Giants for sure. Cuz the Giants already have a game on them. 
And also, Washington has the game on them. They have the same record, and Washington has the game on them. So that's <laughs> that's big too. They do. That is right. The North, Minnesota, obviously is better. Uh, they're second. South, Tampa Bay is going to win the division. Um, yeah, they're better than Atlanta, right? I think your best shot here is the NFC West. If Seattle comes back down to earth or the Niners falter along the way, that's your chance to, you know, jump them. As it stands right now, I think they're going to be on no, the Okay, let's go bracket game. here. Hold on. Let, let's go bracket and make this easier. Okay. Okay. So let's go division winners first. All right. Let's say it's Philly, Mini, uh, Tampa, and let's just go with the Niners. Okay, that's four. Okay. All right. Who are the three that go over them? Giants. Okay. Either Commanders or Cowboys in Seattle. Keep in mind, you need to beat out the Giants and Commanders, and both of those teams have a game on you. I think the okay. I think the Giants are. I think the Giants are safe. I'm not necessarily. The Cowboys have a really tough schedule. If they lose to Minnesota and and the Giants, or yeah, because that's their next two games. All right. I I know I I shouldn't be caveating this, but I do think I do think this will happen, and I think somehow some way this is going to happen. I think the Packers can make it as a seven. I really do. I think Seattle, I actually do think Seattle finishes strong and makes the playoffs. So I think it comes down to the Packers, the Commanders, and the Cowboys. I think that's what it's going to come down to. Uh, barring a late push from Arizona, I, I don't really see it. So, um, so it's going to be what I said, Cowboys, Commanders, Packers, right? The Commanders, can I really trust on a consistent basis? They've won a lot. They've, they've looked pretty good. They've, they have. I, I don't know. So I'm, I, I like, I, I'm just too... I need a little bit more from them. Even though they beat some really good teams, I just need a little bit more if you, you catch my drift. They're, just, they're not winning in impressive ways for me. Okay, Cowboys and the, and the Packers. I will say this. If the Cowboys drop the next two games, I think the Packers make it. And if they don't, I think the Packers won't. I think that's probably what I'll say. What if Because I, I just this, don't know. Like, I, What if we threw the schedule I think the in Packers now? will get there. Like, I think they will get to a good position where they can say, hey, we're going to be eight or nine wins here, and we have a chance. Uh, I think that's what it's going to come down to. It's going to be really close because the, pa- the Cowboys have a decent lead on them. I believe the Packers are four and six, if I'm not mistaken, and I believe the Cowboys are six and three. Yep. So they still, the Packers still have to play the Titans, the Eagles, the Bears, the Rams, the Dolphins, Vikings, Lions. So that's possibly four, three losses right there. Maybe four. Yeah. Yeah, that's you're right. Actually, it's a okay. tough slate. It's gonna be man. really close. It's gonna be really close. Yeah. So, qu- I mean, yeah. Quite frankly, they probably would just have to tie tie Dallas. That's their go- that's their goal here. They just have to tie Dallas. Yeah. That's what it's gonna- and yeah, you're right. I don't know. I don't know if they can get there. And moving on, it is our favorite segment. Hopefully, it's your guys' favorite segment. Weekly picks, Shrikar. Why don't you get into it? Uh, I really don't know how I did. I know I had some good picks. I know I had some bad ones, but uh, let's recap it for me. Uh, everyone had a at 500 or below 500 week. So wait, it really? It wasn't very good. So Jack won the week at seven and seven. Damn. So he is at 95 wins. You went six and eight, so it's 90 wins. Me and the fans went Oof. five and nine. So it's still it's still relatively close between us three. But Jack is kind of. I mean, we're in week 11. Hey, we're only so. five games back. Yeah, okay. It's possible. Yeah, if only I hadn't picked Cleveland. Oh, oh, well. Yeah, I think he got us with the TB game. Ugh, that's annoying. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Oh, well. All right, Well, let's technically, start you off. should have been four and eight, but we gave you the Arizona one. What do you mean gave me the air? I switched it. <laughs> you McCoy know what? Came. Actually, you know what? We should maybe pull this with the fans. So he changed the pick at 128, and we always say it has to be right before the kickoff time. So maybe the we'll pull The kickoff was maybe. at 128, though. Maybe we'll pull it, or maybe we'll let him keep it. He might need it. All right. You guys let me keep it. Next. So, all right. Thursday yeah. night football. Got a good one. It's the Tennessee Titans and the Green Bay Packers in Lambeau Field. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers finally snapped their losing streak on Sunday. We talked about it before. And now you're getting a beat-up Titans team coming to Lambeau. I'll start off here. Uh, it's a short week. I'm actually going to pick the Packers here because the Titans are still missing Jeffrey Simmons, still missing Zach Cunningham. We don't know the status on those guys, but because it's a short week, I'm going to assume that they're out, um, which makes this pick a little bit easier for me. I think the Packers are going to ride the momentum of that Cowboys game and get a win here on Thursday Night Football. 
All right, let's talk about it. Uh, first of all, it's pretty funny how the Titans receivers start to do well when a certain number 17 yeah, comes okay. back into the lineup. I am saying it. Ryan Tannehill is still a good quarterback. The only problem is the Titans are going to have to win this game by having the Packers not score uh, points. And I think the Packers are a team that is capable of scoring points. Uh, you're not going to get 10 points from Denver every week so uh, with an injured team. So give me give me Green Bay. But I do think the Titans are better down the road. All right, Bears-Falcons. Uh, I'll let you start on, on this one. The Falcons coming off a bad loss. Chicago lost as well to Detroit at home. Who you got in this one? This one's tough, especially because it's in a dome. And I feel like that does favor or it helps both teams, right? Like, I think the Bears can, you know, really thrive on that. Uh, they looked pretty good in the Cowboys dome. Uh, they're actually one of the only, they're the only team uh, in recent memory, I believe over two decades, to score 29 plus points in consecutive weeks and lose both of them. <laughs> um, so that I think is a testament to the Chicago's defense. Uh, Atlanta, I think you just got to go back to running the ball, man. I, I think that's just what it comes down to. I think they just got outclassed by Carolina in terms of the run game on a rainy Thursday night. Uh, well rested. I think they really had time to prepare for this game. Give me Atlanta and a bounce back. I think they always play better at home. Yeah. Falcons also have the advantage of the mini buy. So, I mean, Chicago has seen Justin Fields emerge, uh, but even in that heater, the bears are only one in five. So I'm also going to go with the Falcons here as well in Atlanta. Uh, it definitely helps them. They're more rested and actually, uh, actually, I'm re-looking at this. Um, see, the Bears can get to 30. I don't know if the Falcons can. I think mean, they can. So uh, that's why I'm a little bit concerned. Um, I'm gonna keep Atlanta for now, but that's that's a pick that could easily change. All right, Browns Bills. We all know the circumstances of this game. It is going we to. We should be... definitely have saved this one for last, but okay. I mean, it's giant snow game. Uh, I'll, I'll let you start here because right, you're a Browns fan. Browns. No, you're first. I started this this past Atlanta. So one. you don't want to talk about the Browns first, okay? Uh, nah, you can go. I'll talk about them after you. Well, Buffalo's lost two straight. They desperately need to win. My thing is here. If it comes down to the run game, which it very much will in the snow, I would take the Browns. You know what you're going to have to do. <laughs> you know what you're going to have but to I do. But I can't get myself to pick them. So give me the Bills for right now. Uh, man, I, it's, I, it's a oh, big man. issue if the, if the Bills can't keep up in the run game in this sort of weather conditions. But this could be one that switches. If I'm a Browns fan... And ironically, I am. I could not have asked for a better weather to play the Bills in. I mean, literally, this is a God-given gift. And I know the Browns are going to find some way to mess it up. But this is like the perfect weather to play the Bills in. What are you gonna? What, what do you? What do you? What do you think the Browns should do if they're playing in this type of condition? Run the damn ball, please, please, just run the ball. Um, ah, man. I think, okay, if we get JOK back, give me Cleveland, and I, I think he will play. So give me Cleveland. If he is not out there, I think Buffalo takes it, but I think he's, that's why he's really important. So, Okay, so it's our first difference there. I could switch to Cleveland, honestly, but I'll keep it as Buffalo for now. It, it, I mean, season, if Cleveland loses here, I mean, I already kind of said the season's over, but if, but, but, but could, okay, hold on. But if Cleveland were to win this game, the season is not over. Like there's a genuine chance they could come back because the easier part of the schedule comes with Watson. So like if they win this, Cleveland has to look at this and say, okay, if we win the Bucks, if we beat the Bucks and the Bills, you're five and six with Deshaun coming back. That is a very, and all your tough games are at home. That's you. Yeah. Like, and you, then, you and then that. watch the Browns lose to the Texans. Well, yeah, I feel like that, that would be the most Browns thing to do. Um, but yeah, you got to look at this and say, Hey, Buffalo and Bill, if you lose one of these two, it's over. Like this is literally, this is literally season on the line. Uh, so yeah, give me, give me Cleveland here. All right. Eagles Colts. Who you got? No legacy game. I'm hoping. Um, this was, again, I was robbed. Um, it was going to be, you know, a Wentz revenge game, but, uh, obviously, you know, he's not in India anymore. So I was robbed. Um, uh, <sighs> I wonder. 
Give me Philly. Yeah, I didn't really have to wonder. I, the the Eagles have a case as the best team in football. Colts have a case as bottom five team in football. I mean, this isn't this isn't particularly hard for me. I think the Eagles will bounce back here. Uh, as we said before, I think it was kind of a fluky loss. Here we go. The Jets and the Patriots, a huge divisional game, a game that we have been talking about for a couple weeks now. I'll start here. You're not. I think this is an ideal spot for the Patriots. They're at home coming off a bye. New York is also rested, but I mean, th- this is where Bill Belichick shines. It's games like these where he just kind of just puts on a master class. So I have a strong feeling the Pats are going to win this game. Yeah, I'm with you. Pats at home off a of bye. Give me. All right. Don't even need to talk about it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> All right. Streak, are they getting a top five pick at the end of the year? No, but they're still not that good. Yeah, at All least right. in my opinion. I think you're still hating too much. All right. Saints Rams. Let's go. All right. Rematch of 2018. Actually, I, you should be starting on this one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A rematch of the infamous no call. It's at New Orleans, too. Uh, I think Stafford will be back for this game. Dude, there's no way the Rams keep sliding. Like, they're just, there's no way, right? Like, (sighs) there's no way you keep, like, I, (sighs) give me the Rams. Like, there's no way. If they lose here, I mean, I mean, like, seriously, you could, they could be in line to tank and they don't even have their first round pick. Give me the Rams. There's no way. Like, there's no way they keep sliding. I can't, like. All right, who are you taking? The Rams are absolutely cooked. But here's my thing. If Stafford plays, I'm going to take L.A. If Wolford plays, I'm going to take New Orleans. So as of right now, I'll pick the Rams if we're going to assume Stafford plays. But obviously there is some contingency there because, yes, the Rams are cooked. Saints have their own issues. But honestly, if we're talking about the better team, I think the Saints are the better team. Like that's that's the thing, and they're at home too in New Orleans. Like it's it's tough. So we'll go with a little bit of a quarterback contingency there, but I think we're both in tune on the Rams, the Lions, and the Giants uh, in New York. The Lions finally won a road game last week, first in the Dan Campbell era. The Giants have also handled every single bad team that they faced, so could be high scoring, but give me the Giants in this game. So the Giants are going to improve to 8-2 and two on the year if they were to win this game. Give me the Giants and Daniel Jones to uh, mm-hmm. illustrate a win that may not seem as impressive, but they get it done. All right. Panthers-Ravens. Uh, I'll let you start on this one, but I think I already know your answer. Yeah, give me the Ravens off a of bye. I don't think it's even close. Sure, Carolina won, but uh, I'm trusting a John Harbaugh-led team to execute off the bye. Yeah, this, this is the biggest mismatch of the week. The Ravens, as you said, coming off a bye. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if this is over by half. Uh, Commanders-Texans. This is a low-key interesting game to me. Texans are the worst team in football, and Washington is frisky with Taylor Heineke. I think right now I would take the Commanders. The spread is put at Commanders minus 2.5, though, so a little interesting betting line there. Well, that's technically Commanders up five because the home team usually gets yeah. three. Mm-hmm. You know, I actually had this as a loss with Wentz. I thought Wentz would blow this game to Houston. Uh, but it's Heineke there. So, And I think Washington has a little bit something to play for now with him. Uh, mm-hmm. What are they, five and five? Uh, yep. Yeah, they look pretty good. Give me Washington. Okay, Raiders, Broncos. I'm going to let you start on this one. But holy cow, this is going to be a disaster class. I'll let you start here. Two teams that a lot of people had in the playoffs. Uh, I was higher on Denver uh, out of the two. I was low on LV, but, I mean, still had these two teams in the mix. They're not at all in the mix. Um, yeah, Denver looked atrocious with Tennessee. And then Las Vegas <laughs> found a way to lose to Unreal. the dumpster fire that is Indianapolis. Um Emotional loss from, uh, or from Carr, and you just heard it. Uh, I'm actually going to. Damn, man, every week. I mean, it's like two teams that I just I cannot pick. Dude. Yeah, same. I, like, what? Can I just pick a tie? Like, would I lose? If I, yeah, no, I would, right? Um, uh, 
can, yeah, if I pick a tie, I only get half half off, right? But I can't win it. Ugh, whatever. No, give you just Raiders. get a loss either way if it's not a tie. Give me the Raiders. Give me the Raiders. Just give me it. Whatever. The Raiders seem to have completely quit. They're down Hunter Renfro and Darren Waller on offense. This is in mile high. I think I'm going to roll with the Broncos here. I, the, as you said, <laughs> these two teams, it's like, especially Denver. I can't pick them to save my you life. You pick them all the time, and they and just they fail always, you every yeah, time. Yeah, it's I don't know why I picked them last week, but oh my god, it's rough with the Broncos. Uh, I I think last week I picked them because I thought they were gonna show something off the buy, and in classic Broncos fashion, they didn't. Cowboys Vikings. Uh, I'll I'll start here. This game is very interesting. Uh, this is the best game of the week. Give me Dallas. Give me Dallas in Minnesota. Whoa, whoa. Give me Dallas. Really? I think. Okay. Okay. Here's my thing. As I said before, how sustainable is this going to be? The Vikings got a very, very emotional high off that Bills game last week. You come home. Den- or Dallas is coming off a loss to Green Bay. That's, you know, that could rile them up for this game. Dak versus Kirk Cousins. Give me Dak. <laughs> Give me Dak. Still putting faith in Dak Prescott. When will you learn? Okay. I'm not even mad at that just because you know Dak is eight and, or not eight, I think like six and one uh, versus Minnesota, something like that. Like he's only had one loss to them. So I'm not mad at that pick. Uh, The Cowboys are eight and one against the Vikings over the last nine meetings. Um, Wow, you made this really interesting because I was really thinking about. Dallas. Um, can't do it. Minnesota I can't do it. I really want to. I really want to see Dallas fail. And the f- <laughs> pure reason you picked Dak Prescott again, he's gonna let you down. Give me the Vikings. All right, <laughs> all right. Chiefs Chargers, another divisional matchup. Uh, I'm gonna let you start here. I think this is a little interesting. It's Chiefs Stop minus it. seven. Stop it. Just give me the Chiefs. Give me the Chiefs. Stop it. The Chargers are so lucky. It's not even funny. They do not deserve any bit of this record that they have. Give me the Chiefs. I'm not. It's interesting. As much as I bagged on the Chargers this year, Kansas City minus seven. I'd honestly pick LA to cover that. I I think I would. Oh, it's at LA, huh? It's in LA, and the Chargers always play these guys close, right? They always do it. Yeah. I'm going to still take the Chiefs. You're not going to pick them, though. I'm going to yeah, still take the Chiefs. Uh, I mean, it's the best offense in the league. The Chargers are a defensive mess. On paper, it seems like this would be, you know, Kansas City, let's pencil it in. But especially in divisional games like this against the Chargers, they, I don't know how they do it. The Chargers just managed to keep it close. So I'll, I'll go with KC cautiously. Bengal Steelers Sunday night football. Uh, it's Kenny Pickett against Joe Burrow. So I already the QB advantage is there for the Bengals. And also, if you consider week one, Pittsburgh was plus five in the turnover margin, and they needed two missed kicks late in all of overtime to win that game. So I think in this second time around, I'm going to go with Cincy. Now, there are some, right. like, uh, just like the last game, but there's it's a divisional game, so weird stuff can happen. It's funny because, you know, as soon as, like, I think this just goes to show how great of a player TJ Watt is. I mean, like, they win the turnover battle damn near every game TJ Watt plays. So that's what it's going to come down to. Uh, but since he off a of bye, ha, ah, it's really hard. I, I like good quarterbacks don't really lose off a of bye. Give me Cincy. All right. We've made it. Monday Night Football in Mexico City, the Niners and the Cardinals. Let's go. All right. Who knows what the QB really situation can, he's is? He's going to continue the streak. Who? Wait, so this wait, is wait, now. Wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I never made my pick yet. You're not picking Arizona. Yeah, Stop I'm not, it. I'm not picking Arizona. <laughs> yeah, so now this is what? 10, 10, 10, 10? Yep, and I do not regret it. I am going with the Niners. So in Shriekar's ideal world, the Niners would have been 10 and 0 by now. Okay, that's I do no, not that's think not... he's going to. That's not the right way. I do not think he's going to pick I, – I need to look at SF's remaining schedule real quick. I don't know if you're ever going to pick against them. I'm just going to look amazing. at it. I'm not going to say it. It's amazing. I'm not going to say it, but they, basis, they've, got some, they've, got, they've, they've got some interesting matchups. But, yeah, I, I don't think Shrikar is going to pick against them the entire way through. All right. Uh, yeah, give me SF. This is like – this is. Stupid. I could. I could <laughs> pick Miami. I could pick – Nah, you won't. 
could you pick won't. Tampa. I could pick Seattle in Seattle. I mean, I could pick I, that. You won't. You wouldn't do that. All right, give me the Niners easily. All right. Easily. There we go. So how many did we differ on? Only the one, stupid three, Vegas one and the Browns three. one. Uh, I'm torn on Chicago. That one I might differ with you. Oh, and many. Yeah. yeah. So got a, got a little bit of variance there. Um, but uh, yeah, let us know in the comments any matchups that you're really excited for. I know I'm excited for that snow game. I feel like that's going to be really cool. I haven't really seen yeah. a snow game like that that the Browns have really been in. So it's going to be fun to watch. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we've been the Cold Hard Truth NFL Podcast, and we will see you guys next time.